Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Curry Cafe. Sadly, that Rick's voice you just heard there is, is, is recorded. Rick has decided to take a sabbatical, and we'll be back in a few weeks. We really miss him. Does a lot mm-hmm. of the heavy lifting around here. Um, we have a couple of interesting things to talk about today, but before I get started on that, let's uh, go around the table and have everybody introduce themselves. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. My name is Billy Ruth Hopkins Furuichi, and I'm a host here on KCIW of my own show called Angelita's Wings. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, and this is Troy Leah, uh, Crescent City's LGBTQ plus uh, representative. And I'm also also, uh, glad to be here. Sorry we're gonna miss Rick though. Yeah. I'm Robert O'Sullivan, I live in Brookings. I used to teach high school and used to be a pastor at the same time in the Bay Area, Oakland. Awesome. Oh, Jeremy Faye. Yeah. We have a really good crew here today. Everybody uh, we've dealt with before, and they seem to be very knowledgeable about everything. Uh, it seems like everybody is tired of talking about the the um, federal situation and want to talk more about local issues, and we will get to that in just a couple of minutes. But before we do that, I want to uh, uh, reintroduce my uh, Lie of the Week segment. I started that several weeks ago where I would say, pick out Trump's favorite lie or my favorite lie. <laughs> and I turned out, it turned out it was just impossible. I could not find a favorite one. There are just so many of them. Uh, the one that pissed me off more than anything that he told this this week, and uh, I'm sure anybody who's a veteran for the military or even knows anything about the military or about our wars our country have been in, is when he compared the Medal of Freedom, which is given Mm, to mm, mm. somebody who does a politician a favor. Uh, Mm -hmm. Rush Limbaugh, as an example, got the Medal of Freedom. He said, it's just like the Medal of Honor, except you don't have to get all shot up and everything. I could have punched the television. Mm -hmm. This man has no idea. In order to win the Medal of Honor, you have to not only risk your life very gravely, but you have to save others uh, it's just, imp- yeah, so that's a little different than the Medal of Freedom. Just a little. Yeah. yeah. Another another one uh, that he's been does, uh, touting uh, quite a bit this week is that uh, you can send little Billy off to school and say, I love you, Billy, have a nice day, and blah, 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 blah. And when little Billy comes home, little Billy is a girl. Oh, I'm already, <laughs> but, but I'm already a girl, right? <laughs> A sex change operation <laughs> while at school. Yeah, right. Slap Without off. the parents' knowledge or permission. Now, when I went to school, well, we used to go every year to the Museum of Natural History in New York, and I had to have a permission slip from my mother to get on that bus and go there. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, guess it's, I guess you probably would need that, but while you're at the museum, they could do a sex change operation without the permission. I don't know. That's that. That was an, one of his lies. Let's see. Let's see. I got more here. I don't. Know. Can I comment on that one? That one's crazy. That that yeah. one's so crazy. They're all yeah. crazy. Well, well they're they, all crazy. They're all crazy. I mean, I mean, honestly, he's just uh, gaslighting his his base. Oh, and then uh, for some reason or other, he was he was doing a town hall this week, and uh, uh, ten minutes or so into it, he decided to channel Dick Clark and played. 39 oh, yeah. minutes of music that he did his wonderful dances to. No explanation as to why, no connection to anything he was doing. That's just what he did. And he, he played the village people. That, yeah. That's, I was, what? I, 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 does he realize that the villi- that, that YMCA is, <laughs> is, is, is a gay anthem? No, I he mean, doesn't. Does, he doesn't know anything. How about, how about <laughs> in the Navy? He's the Navy fool. was this, just this. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, uh, let's see what else do I have here. Oh, uh, I think this occurred yesterday. Now, here we have a man running for president of the United States, and he's giving a speech, or he's had some kind of a thing, and for some reason or other, he brings up Arnold Palmer. Mm. 
And for some reason or other, he seems to know that Arnold Palmer was very well endowed. And because of that, he was a real man. Arnold Palmer was a... What on earth does that have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. Arnold Palmer doesn't have anything to do with anything in the election. He's dead. And what's the difference whether or not he was what Trump considers to be? And, and how a real would Trump man? know that? Because anything compared oh, to him is big, the, apparently. The, all the guys that come out of the showers would say, "Oh, oh, wow, oh, oh I see." Okay. okay, that's the mentality of the guy who. Mm. Uh, Can I respond to a couple of things? Running, yeah, I uh, had another note here. Oh, that's it. I would like to give a shout out. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this or not, but there's a new show on CNN by, uh, that's being hosted by Roy Woods Jr. You may remember him from The Daily Show. And it's called Have I Got News for You? And it's on, on um, must be Saturday night at 8 or 9 or something like that. You can look it up on the schedule, but that's on CNN. Uh, very funny. Awesome. Hmm. Now, being a military brat myself, that first one that you were talking about, the, uh, the honor, Medal of Honor, it, it's just so laughable. What, what would you know anything about? Yeah. Uh, what it takes to be in the military, what commitment, I mean, what sacrifice, it's it's, it's just ridiculous. And the, the, the boy-girl thing is, he's just trying to downgrade everybody. He wants to make sure everybody's less than him, I guess. Women, LGBTQ, the the military just is there anybody he doesn't offend and who's going to vote for him if he offends everybody i don't know does, I don't does any it. of this stuff make sense to make anybody any, around the no. table as far as but even when he offends his base they don't get they it. don't care they, they just it, no. laugh he takes their money and did you heard about that um a, a, a gentleman donated five dollars to him but if you don't check the at the very bottom this little bitty box they drained his bank account, yeah, his yeah. life savings, and he. This person is still going to vote for him. It, it just, I don't. He took all your what? It, I'm sure there's people out there that want to put their, you know, their two cents in. And if you would do, do want to do that, um, our number is five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Give us a little text and let us know what you're thinking because this is just asinine. Thank you for reminding me of it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I should. Well, I get so excited about this. You get wild. Little boys coming home <laughs> as little girls, so yeah. Um, oh, never uh, mind. Well, uh, well, I, well, well, I we'll could, see. We have I some could technical. Check, no. I could check the texts if you want me to. I can. We, that's My done on the right special here. phone. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Do we have the phone? Tom? Tom? Well, if we don't check the texts... I hope we get some other opinions at the table. We haven't heard from Robert. Okay, um, I want to talk about a local election that is hardly an election at all, so much so that the League of Women Voters that you would think would be interested in hearing what candidates for an office might say decided they didn't even have to appear at their events because they had no opposition. Uh-oh. And what is especially offensive to me about that fact is that the current city council in Oak, or in, oh, excuse me, in Brookings, uh, is made up of four people who were appointed and only one who was elected. And three of those who were appointed was really as a result of a banana bubba a banana republic, banana coast <laughs> uh, coup d'etat. Uh, the losers of the recall election last year, if you don't remember, conspired with existing members on the council to, in effect, decide that they should choose their, their own successors. Sore losers winning. That's election disturbance of the worst sort. Yeah. yeah. I did not wow. realize that. And uh, I was hoping that strong candidates would run against them. No one chose to. I tried to encourage some people. There are problems of who lives within the city limits and who doesn't and, and that sort of thing. 
But I had thought at least at the city council mem- meet, at, at least at the League of Women Voters meeting, I could ask them some questions, especially about the debacle at Saint, regarding St. Tim's. Right. There, right now, we know that a good over 625000 of taxpayers' money is going to pay for the folly of the council in ignoring religious liberty stuff and being scofflaws and assuming that since this is a banana belt, that the banana republic type ethics apply rather than the Constitution of the United States, Constitution of Oregon, and a very on-point federal statute called the Religious Land Use and in, in Institutionalized Persons Act, which specifically said that if you're going to mess with people's religious beliefs, you have to have a compelling state interest that cannot be reached by any other means. Hmm. This passed both houses of Congress unanimously in the year 2000, and yet with all that being known, by the council, with a federal judge ruling against the council, they still voted unanimously to try to fine St. Tim's seven hundred twenty dollars a day until they drop some undefined social services. Is there uh, any recourse? Uh, the well on that particular thing, when the whole matter of paying for the legal fees of the election. Uh, took place, uh, St. Tim's negotiated that that finally would be dropped. Mm -hmm. But all five of these people said that something so obviously ridiculous uh, should go on, and uh, even after the the court had ruled against them on the question of whether they can control churches' feeding programs, how often they could feed, and all that. The federal judge called that an ill-conceived ordinance, and yet here these clowns who accepted that are getting a free ride, even from the League of Women voters. They should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, who's, you who, know, who's you, appointed oh, them? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Troy. Yeah, who, 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 appoint, who appoints them? Uh, <laughs> what happened, there was a recall. And right. Remaining, so when they had the recall, uh, when it was obvious that the recall was going to go through, two of them quit. Okay. All right. Now that left the third one, which left a, a quorum, right? And the uh, quorum then was allowed to do that. Am I remembering uh, correctly? It, 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 you, you're close. It's 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 not exactly that way, but uh, essentially, um, there's a long period between uh, when election happens, even though the results were out the night of the election and when it is officially certified. It's like 45 days. Oh, I actually, yeah. and, and during that time period, yeah, the sore losers chose to thing. negotiate with the two people remaining on the council to let one of them resign before he was officially removed by recall, and then he was replaced on the council, and then they replaced two others. So rather than have a post-recall election, which everyone expected, uh, they the losers got to choose their successors. That's wow. really outrageous. Well, that's- so, so the, the, the reason the recall took place was our city manager was caught by Fred Meyer uh, stealing stuff. She had stuff in her car, and she was charged uh, with uh, a misdemeanor, which was then reduced to a violation of all right. This went on for months and months and months. The whole community is up in arms. This isn't. She's also been involved in some other things. Seven, another job she had. Seven months of paid administrative leave, right. among other things. After, after committing a crime. After committing. Yeah, and she. What, what was her salary? Something like one hundred and fifty a year. Uh, Wow. It uh, was way up there. It was way more than a governor. I remember wow. That. So you would think, okay, you got caught like this red-handed and this and that. To yeah. Come in and try in some way to be somewhat contrite. So or, exactly the opposite. Or exactly run out, out of town with a jail just, between your legs. They were just, and the mayor, for some reason or other, the unknown, although rumored, backed her a thousand percent and just kept arguing and arguing about how she has to keep her job and she's the only one that can do it. And, 
blah, 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 blah. And it was just, it was. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was just, well, that makes any sense. Blah, blah. It's like there's so, like an inner core of crazy. Yes. The, this was quite some time ago, wasn't it? I remember voting in that. It was uh, six, a year six, and a half ago or so. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah. Time flies, I yeah. guess. But uh, to not be able to ask them to explain themselves mm. or apologize. Well, she did apologize, remember? I, she, and she, I'm she, talking about the St. Tim's thing. Oh, oh, uh, oh I was, right. I was uh, and, back up. Or there, apologize even how they got their seats. I mean, one of them is a, a wife of a civics teacher, and she also voted against the First Amendment, in essence, uh, uh, on continuing to harass this church because it was serving the poor so effectively. Okay, now mo most of these city council members are just regular folks. They uh, work at the hardware store, this and that, and they're not lawyers, and they're not uh, like somebody that might be in the Senate. But don't they have advisors telling them that, that don't, isn't there a lawyer, a city lawyer that tells them there, they can there do this, is can't do a that? city lawyer and the city lawyer uh, gets paid whether she gives good advice or not. And I'm sorry. Um, so, Robert, do you go to these meetings on a regular basis? No, I I did go a number of times and testified on the St. Tim's banner. Do you think? That's a good idea to ask the public to attend city council meetings so that we know what's happening and have a voice for our community. Yeah, you got no voice. Well, <laughs> when I, when I uh, first it, moved here about six, seven years ago, there was an incident that, that I made me want to go to a city council meeting, even though I don't live in the city. So I mentioned that to somebody who's lived here for a while, and uh, they said, well, you can go, but you're wasting your time. Whatever you want to talk about, their their mind is made up, and we will not change it. And then I had a couple of reasons to go, and I was shocked at how just stonewalling common sense they were, and it was literally a waste of time to go and te testify. They are are viewable on on television, yeah, uh, and on YouTube after they happen. And uh, well, that's after the fact. Uh, well, it, it, they, it can be watched live in certain. Uh, facilities. I, I'm not sure what. It might be a certain cable company or so. And it might be live on YouTube as well. I think it is because yeah. I've talked to people who said, yeah, I watched it on television tonight. But can you have input if you're watching on YouTube? No, no. I think, I mean, the whole idea is if we want to have input, we have to physically be there in a seat and get up and make a statement. Well, they're not going to listen. Had, we've had a change. Who's, go ahead, Troy. Who else can you, what's above them? Who, who else can you go that's above them that might have some kind of sense to do something about it. You should have that power to do it, right? Well, I'm thinking, though, simply by by seeding the consciousness of the listeners with some reality and some truth. It, it, it's valuable to have um, a voice for reason put out there. Right. We, don't, we don't have a lot of ways that news is disseminated in this. I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and this uh. town... The, the newspaper might have a column or two about the city. Yeah, our, in Crescent City, it's just pretty we, much the same. We are, we are in the process of putting together a real newsroom with a real news reporter mm -hmm. and uh, that will do regular broadcasts about things like that. Right now we have shows like this or some others that might discuss what was going on, but if you're not listening to KCIW, you don't get that. Wow. I've been I've been to, let's see, three incidents, maybe four, where People were literally lined up in the parking lot to speak. The room was full really? immediately, and and people were lined up to come in and speak, and it was like they weren't even there. And at, at, at one particular incident, I can't even remember what that incident was about, but we had a, a woman who was frequently a panelist here, very learned, very well-spoken person, who was giving her opinion about it. So I think it might have been something to do with, say, Tins, but I don't know. And she wasn't. We got people that are up there and then they ramble on and boring and not knowing anything. Mm -hmm. But this is a very well informed person. And as she's speaking, the mayor is not even looking up at her. He's scribbling on something on his on his uh, on his desk, like John Stewart used to at the beginning right. of the Daily Show. And finally, she she said, "You're not even looking at me. You're not listening to me at all, are you?" 
And then she went on, and he continued <laughs> scribbling. But after that. a while, he did look up. But, I mean, th- in other words, I, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah, what the situation, by, I, I assume it's the law or, or the, the way the council's organized. They allow people to speak up to five minutes, mm-hmm. basically, on any subject. Well, in a number of cases, I, I did this rega- re- regarding the same time wow. thing. And uh, it... I even had someone uh, who caught an angle of the current mayor while I was speaking, just plain not paying attention, looking at a phone or mm. or wiggling around and what have you. And uh, that it's one they they don't have any accountability when they don't have opponents running against them. And if the League of Women Voters won't even have them be there for questions so that people can ask them, why are you in this office to begin with, and things like that. For money, apparently, because that's all they have There's to do no is money. just collect their check. They don't, it's for voluntary, no pay. Yeah. Oh, so these appointed people are not getting paid? No. They can, they can, but they can like, pay. charge for travel and things like that from, from you know, mileage, and that, but from what I understand, none of them do. So they just get power? Is, is, that, is that it? Well, On this council? the city council, yeah. And they have done some outrageous things. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, Crescent City had an incident where, with the firework incident, this last year, where that child was was hospitalized and there was that huge explosion and it was terrible. Really, really, a lot of people got hurt, and there just wasn't a lot done about it. I mean, it's like who has to die and get and more people have to be injured for the the, the council to do anything there too. You know, that's really interesting. It's uh, it's for their own self interest, and whatever particular projects or platforms they want to push, they will be allowed to push them. Especially if we don't insinuate our own voices into the community. Which I don't know. I'm 80 years old. I probably won't go to any of these meetings. But I really think some people ought to start. One thing I did, and this was, uh, <laughs> in essence, a council. I, I'm, I'm Christian and was background as a minister, but I didn't relate to any congregation around here, including St. Tim's. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I went to the Unitarians more often than anywhere where else. But uh, anyway, when uh, I got interested in what was happening, the council, in essence, made, evangelized me to become a member of St. Tim's, and I tried to figure out Given the media void here, the pilot should be called the pilotless. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that <laughs> how how do I communicate on this? And I found two basic places: one, a website called progressivechristianity.org, where I have writings on many subjects, and the other being YouTube. And I have a, on my own YouTube channel. I have about. 15 items on St. Tim's. And if anybody wants to see that peop- that person not listening to me or other issues related to that, that that's where they can find it. I, I and, uh, go ahead. I only know a little bit about St. Tim's. I, vo- I volunteered there once uh-huh. to uh, serve food for the hungry. Uh, and I do that for the holidays because I'm Jewish. And that's what my family does. We we don't do the, this gift thing or whatever, obviously. We... Um, we go and help those in need because that's what it should be really about, those that have less. So I go and volunteer and feed feed the homeless mm-hmm. or whatever. And they were they were great as far as the experience and then I you know, I left. But that's just terrible to hear that they're being harassed or the the, the city council and the, I think maybe the city population in general is not very kind to the homeless here. And, uh, because they're stigmatized, and the, yeah, the 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 saying is, "There's a reason you don't feed bears." That's so they're that's, trying to make it um, uncomfortable. And yeah. uh, right. so there was one guy whose who's, uh, stand was, "We have to get rid of the drugs. When you get rid of the drugs, they'll leave with that." No. Yeah, that's like uh, like uh, W. C. Fields talked about tying a uh, hair ribbon on a bolt of lightning. That's what. Uh, well, at least rid of the drugs. We have. Um, I, I read in the paper because we only get the paper three days a week now. Um, they're building. They're they've been approved to build a site for a, a, like a homeless c- camp aid. Have you heard about it? 
No, in, where in is Crescent, it going to be? In Crescent City. Crescent City. And it's supposed to be uh, like you start off here, you know, you, you enter the site, and then you they gradually work you into, you know, whatever your needs are. If it's, if it's a mental issue or mm-hmm. um, an addiction issue, they work that out until you try to get you back on your feet, mm-hmm. basically, which I found amazing. But uh, until I see it, you know, I'm not going to believe it. Yeah. You know, the, I've, the whole, we could do a whole, I, uh, there's been several shows done on homeless in this station, but mm-hmm. it's, it's just hard for me and probably everybody here who got up uh, in the morning and goes to work every day and did what, did what they could to get themselves qualified to have a job and all that. It's hard to understand people who haven't done that. I, have, ahead, really. I have always uh, advocated for a homeless community where, that it has an education arm to it so that you can educate the people in the way of of how they can better themselves from the beginning of their lives from taking a bath to brushing their teeth to getting off of drugs to stop smoking because you'd save a lot of money if you stop smoking and and to have a to have like a tiered a tiered format so that Te- ex-teachers like us, I'm a teacher, I'm a former teacher, I would love to teach a class on how to do an interview, for example, or how to uh, reduce your stress, a stress management class, a, um, emotional intelligence class. These types of educational programs could easily be in a homeless shelter. I, I think, though, a lot of the problem with the homeless here is mental illness. To some yeah, I think well, I'm all, sure all it all is. It's time for some... I think it's different for every that's single why I person, say, really. That's yeah. why I say I, a tier education system. A, a, a couple of years ago to interact with a homeless person, and it, I won't go into how it happened, but it wasn't the typical situation where you, you pass them on the street and don't even look at them. I had to interact with this person for a little while, and uh, she was obviously uh, somewhat sophisticated. She was blotto when I was talking to her. She was... Down, coming down, or she was she was just not hundred percent there, but you could tell by the way she carried herself and that 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 she was not always living on the streets. And as I'm talking to her as little as I could, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, God, at, at one time she was somebody's pride and joy. Yeah. She was somebody who the mother took the uh, the ultrasound pictures and all that, and she you, you was there for hope. Christmas and holidays. Yeah. And now. Here she is on the streets. You know, but maybe she's not because a lot of people are not. Well, there's she's a like that. There's, there's a follow up to it. It, it turns somebody who knew her who uh, said that her parents lived here and they were fairly well off, and she, she couldn't live with them just because of her or the way she was. And I, from what I heard last, I heard that the family has taken her back and she's gotten back on track now. Yeah. Oh, well, it's good. You have to figure out what, especially with mental, mental illness, what avenue you need to go down for, you know, counseling or, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of it's medication that they can't afford, or that are a medication, it, but to help the situation. During, during my time as a state trooper in Alaska, I occasionally dealt with, with mentally ill people. I'd worked in rural areas, and sometimes there would be somebody, I mean, we're 100 miles from Fairbanks, which is a tiny town to begin with, and there's somebody just walking along the street with their hood up in the in the middle of summer, and I'll engage them and, and somehow get them to some place where they could uh, could get some help. But most of them have just didn't want to take the meds anymore or something like that. Yeah, well, they have to want to get the in. help. Huh? They have to want to get the, the help. Because there, yeah, there are yeah, facilities thanks. in Crescent City, and I know here, that if you want the help, you can just go, you know, go for I, it. I, I think, I, I'm not sure there are facilities here in Workings. Uh, Right. For the for a mentally ill. From well, for what, I, what I'm told is they are given the opportunity to go someplace. Is that right, Pop? They give them a bus ticket or something that they can go to. I wherever. I I I don't know about that. Uh, what I do know is there are two places where all sorts of what might be called good navigating or uh, pointing people in the mm-hmm. right direction. One is St. Tim's and one is Brookings Core. Uh, and Brookings Core actually grew out of St. Tim's. Uh, it it uh, during 
uh, the early days of COVID, and I know this vividly because I lost my wife in those days, not to COVID, but oh, uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, this town during the early days of COVID basically shut down. Mm-hmm. The state closed the county health department because of incompetent leadership, I believe. Uh, I think the person in charge was a dental hygienist. Uh, and uh, other things really shut down, but St. Tim's kept going. And when there used to be seven churches, and they're now back to seven churches that regularly feed, but uh, only two of them kept feeding during COVID. Uh, and the, I'm not judging them. It's just, you know, what do you do when this new disease with with uh, high uh, communicability is, is upon us. But what St. Tim's has is remarkable in that they have what they call um, an advocacy team. And if someone needs help getting uh Sometimes it's small things like gas or or to help pay with a utility bill, uh, and or if they need uh, uh, medic to get onto a medical plan, uh, these volunteers at the at the advocacy team it's three days a week, three hours in the morning, uh, are there to help them get on health care plans, to f- help them find ways to get apartments and, and all that sort of thing. And Berkeley, or Brookings Core uh, does much of the same thing and they opened up a big navigation center. You've probably seen it on 101. I have a question about <clears throat> the uh, the people who maybe get funneled into Brookings Core, do they have to also be funneled into St. Tim's? No. Because, okay. Because some of the people who are street people may have a an objection to doing something with a religious organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some some kind of multi systemic system needs to be. Is well, that what CORE does? Uh, CORE, to a remarkable degree, uh, relates to mental health groups, relates to uh, the big health care plans that are available. And, and that's a totally secular organization. Okay. But I, I will say with St. Tim's, they do not proselytize in providing social services. And that would that's be... A, that's yeah. a big, clear uh, understanding there. They, they're, they're trying to share love and concern. They're not trying to convert them mm-hmm. into... Uh, or make any, them something else. Yeah. Well, well my, my brother-in-law actually works for New Dawn down in Crescent City, and uh, he's amazing who works for the mentally handicapped and but severely like you know schizophrenia Mm -hmm. really outrageous mental issues and uh he's amazing at it so i I know there's programs out there that you can get into if you just want the help oregon is like 49th in the nation in those kind of mental health services yeah it's awful very very down on the on the spectrum of things yeah yeah. Yeah. and and there are some people that do need to be in a quote mental institution there 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 are better euphemisms these days for it and uh state of oregon has very very few beds for that the the ironic thing too about uh about that is that was just that was a uh um, a liberal decision to have to uh, make it so that you could not lock somebody up just because they were mentally ill unless they were a threat to themselves or somebody else. Mm-hmm. And th- a that, lot of these people we're seeing here now would be in, a, in an institution, but this is America. And, and I remember in the days in California when Reagan was uh, governor, he shut down all the mental institutions. Was it, was it Reagan? That, yes, that, it was Reagan. Oh, yeah, I, th- yeah. I thought it was a liberal. No, it was Reagan. He okay. did it. I was um, living in California in those uh-huh. days. Uh, that, that, there, there's another whole part of it, and I used to work in the legislature around those days. Uh, there was a, a, a well-intentioned liberal effort called the, uh, let's see, Lanterman Petrus Short Act that was trying to build up community mental health services. Mm-hmm. And... The, the whole intent of that was indeed to get fewer people out of, ins- or more people out of institutions into places where family was nearby and all that. 
And anyway, that was passed by liberal legislators, but Reagan became governor and and exploited that uh, in a way of uh, not funding the community services, but to having, it was a little like Trump, having some bad things to point out, look at all these loonies running around on the streets now. And so that's the, how he got away with it. Yeah, that's how that's he got how away. We got away. Yeah. So that that might that might be a good segue, although a little bit around the horn, but a good segue into what I I wanted to be on a platform with my bullhorn today about about measure one eighteen. There I got several pieces of information in the mail that, that said no, no, no on measure one eighteen. And whatever, whatever. many of them were from liberal or more progressive areas. The, the me- okay, the, the measure basically says that there will be a tax levied on manufacturers and businesses that make over $25 million in Oregon, and that tax will then be redistributed and, um, and given to individuals who qualify, you can't be homeless to qualify for it. You have to have lived in in Oregon for over 200 days to qualify. So I think the people who are against this measure, there's some on the left and some on the right, I think they're simply being misinformed. And I have looked through the booklet and I have made lots of notes about it. And I, I don't know if anyone here is going to vote for it, but I certainly am going to vote yes, even though all of these, many of these documents that I've received in the mail say no, no, no. They say that it will allow people to come in to Oregon who are homeless and just automatically collect this check. It also says that schools will not be getting money anymore, which is absolutely false. That's gaslighting. It says right here in the hmm. booklet. The is, is it a, 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 eventually this money is going to affect the uh, the general fund? Money that goes into the general fund. That's one of the objections to it. What, uh, that is one of the objections to it. It will affect the general fund, yes. But it's also going to be allowing that money that goes into the general fund to be redistributed to qualifying individuals and to schools. And to young mothers. And to young mothers. Are you talking about the 16 a month then, or are you talking about something else? No, there's a 16... A year, I'm sorry. And that's a bulk number. A year is a bulk, is for everyone who qualify. Not everyone is going to qualify. Because you're getting you're getting a new qualifying things that I that I've been able to find. But I, the qualifying thing I saw was you had to be here for 200 days. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to be here for 200 days. And that's how you qualify. I don't get what what's the point. Why would you? Any you can't just just they're saying through on a weekend. Yeah, pick up your check. I mean that this is one of the, this is one of the objections to it. it. Oh, we'll have so many people moving in here, that just because they want to collect this money. No, that will not happen. We, we, we isn't there a reason and, for and, the and, money though? What's the reason for the money? The reason for the money is to help individuals who need a little extra help. Kind of like a welfare situation. Well, it's except not well, it's not it's limited not to welfare. that. The you can be a multimillionaire and still get that. No. Money. <sighs> No when has that changed? That's the last thing I read was that everyone gets it, every man, woman, and child, newborn Otherwise. baby. In Alaska, we have what they call a, a permanent fund, which is uh, find it. it's the interest on the, the fund that's, that's built up by the oil companies. And every year, if you've lived in the state for, I believe it was, I think you had to live there for a year, uh, you got... A, a piece of that fund, and that it's was divided up among the, among the uh, among the uh, the citizens. That if it was a good year on the stock market and the, the investments did well, you got sometimes I believe it was at least when I lived there could run as high as two thousand dollars, or it could be as little as six hundred dollars, and that was the big argument there. We're going to have people move here just to get the permanent fund. I don't think somebody's going to move there no, just to get $1,000. But well, that's kind of crazy. What about the prisoners? I mean, because like, they got $33 million of COVID money, and they're in prison. The information I got is that prisoners in jail would get it too because one of the one of the uh, objections I read from somebody was that, they, that the prisoners can have it, and they can buy their hash pipes and do this and that. But 
It just it just seems counterproductive. It I think that's seem... but I think that's gaslighting. It it does not say that prisoners will get this money. And I it think it's not. in that book that I read that. I think that's a bad faith scare tactic. I will try to find it. Oh, well, I haven't heard look. anything positive that's going to help. What's it going to do? You know, I was going to help these people just giving them a check. That's not going to help anything. I mean, what what do you mean? I mean, what if it, it will help families who need the money? Well, that's kind of like a, 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 an assistance program, right? It's Is not it welfare. Like welfare. It's it's not welfare. You, you know that the, the need the money thing is uh, one of the one of the jokes in Alaska always was uh, uh, when permanent fund is coming up that uh, you know all the trailer parks are going to fill up with new snow machines now. But maybe they needed the money, but they were pissing it away anyway, which is another thing entirely. What I is the need? You know this need. Yeah, you know, uh, everybody needs their- support. And then now, now Billy has something different on this than I got that. If you are like borderline food stamps and this 1600 put you over, you lose your food stamps no, or whatever benefits no, you're getting. No, no, that is absolutely false. Okay. You will not lose. This is one of the things that's, that I have discovered in now, this it's been, it's, there's, there's There's a proposal that it not do that, and there's also a proposal that it not be federally taxed, but uh, the information I got is that uh, that's not likely to actually happen. It sounds to me like you know, taking money from one pot and putting it in another is going to do something. Other the one other. pot has to do with welfare for corporations, and the other has to do with welfare for people who may or may not be struggling. Yeah. But it's I, I'd rather that the the welfare go to the people and than the really extremely rich corporations. Yeah. That's, it's not going. That's the whole thing. It's they're taking it away from the extremely rich yeah, corporations. The welfare they they get in in so many ways in federal taxes and and so forth that that I'd rather see people even if they don't all spend it right have it have the money. That, I think we're saying the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I d- it's not communism and welfare. I mean, uh, one of the one of the people that that wrote in this booklet said. This is a communist tactic. It's socialism. It's welfare. It I, is. I don't believe that. I think a lot of these people don't know what communism and socialism. Oh no! Yeah, I think you that's know when, true when too. Trump starts ranting about they're communists, they're fascists, they're you know all these different things. Why is he saying that? Where's he getting that from? Right. Because it's a catchphrase. Yeah, I, I still don't really understand it. That's kind of. Well, I'll, I'd be happy to lend you my booklet, and right. you can you can read my notes yeah. in here. Um, People there who live are. here don't want to read it, Troy. I don't think well, you there. <laughs> like the propositions, you know, I read, I read all my, my, my booklet for the propositions. And they, they purposely make it complicated. Yes, they do. So people, other people will be like, I just can't, they can't mentally sustain the information. And so they, just, they just like, I'm not going to vote, forget it, you know. Uh, or you'll go with what your what your party says you should do. Like we have this little card with suggestions. We, and they have no opinion on this one. It, it's cra- that's that, that's that's what I said. I, I absolutely agree. This is exactly why they make these things sound so difficult. It's what they do in Washington too. What the the fellow that was here last week or the week before or whatever was so upset when I brought up the fact that there was a, a bilateral um, legislation that went out for um, for reform at the border for immigration reform. And he said, yeah, but it just had all these other things in it that dragged it down. Yes, this is Washington, this pork barrel things that are always attached ta- to these bills. On they're things, tagged yeah. onto the bills. That's exactly what happened. How is and it that's that we, what they're doing to us here too. How do we keep that situation? You Why know, can't we get rid of it? Because that's the that's the legislative bureaucracy that's paper Paper heavy. It's always been paper heavy. That's what it is. And if you can come up with a system to make it one page instead of well, seventy five thousand, well, well, we have a situation <laughs> where if, if you if you put in a bill to make it, uh, I don't know, Ill- illegal to kill frogs, <laughs> right? And and then you tag onto that bill. Uh, it's okay to do this, or it's not okay. You know, things that have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do well, about it. Be, uh, well. That's just the way the system has always been. Uh, that's, that's not a reason. No, I know that's well, not right. a reason. That's, that's just... Well, in the particular case that 
you were talking about, that legislation was not killed because of details. It was killed because Donald Trump. Yes. Oh, yeah. And exactly. that was my point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was my point to this fellow that Donald Trump called up all of his Republican people and mm-hmm. said, you will kill that bill because I want that and problem when I get into strong, office. Yeah. conservative Republican yeah. But main sponsor. Yeah, when we had absolutely. a conservative here two weeks ago, he said the same thing you did, that there was a lot of money involved that, that he was... Uh, oh, please. Yeah. Uh, has anybody lost the fact that he's a convicted felon? What are the... We have no standards. Oh, they're not really felonies. You know, they were just little business things that everybody uh, does. No, uh, not everybody. Yeah. It's well, just, we're talking to the choir here. <laughs> <laughs> just, and that he's indicted for several more. And then he's selling these Bibles and his shoes, and it's just all this. The stuff. Bibles, by the way, are, are printed in China. Well, yeah. of course. And, and they, they say he. And, the thing is, he doesn't know that because the label that says "printed in China" is on the inside. He's he would have had to open it. Yeah. It, 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 well, it's such a double standard. He can do all these things, and then they turn to the Democrats and say, you, you, "I mean, can you imagine if, if Kamala was selling, you know?" Bras or, or <laughs> trading, whatever trading cards, trading cards, trading or cards. coins. Of, you know, but that money's going to her personally. Like all that money's going to him personally. Yeah, it is. That's it's right. So that's how not, is that's that not right? A, a lot of people probably think it's a donation to the campaign. I, I don't see how, how is he able to get away with all this stuff and nobody's stopping him. Nobody, because it's legal. Yeah. Sort it's of. legal to do it. It's yeah. just something that that. Most people have enough decency that they wouldn't have done something like that. And I'm doing my it's, part. It's legal to lie. I'm doing my part. I'm going to turn in my ballot today. I'm going to put my ballot right in the ballot box, box. today. Is yeah. it boxed out yes. yet? There, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I just, think it might. Mine was in the mail yesterday. Okay, but yeah. the box, I think, is only out in a day or two. Oh, really? Oh, well, then I'll put it in when it's open or you up. Can put it, you can mail it, but you have to. I don't want to mail it. I want to drop it in the no. box. You know what happens Don't to the mail. mail? Those mail bags get found in a river someplace. Yep, yep, yep. Five hundred ballots in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd like to talk on the national scene and in, in kind of sweeping terms. Um, when I was a young man, I was involved in a lot of civil rights stuff and the anti-Vietnam stuff and that, and I had the basic assumption that on race, when the laws broaden rights to everyone. That and when people of different ethnicities and races got to know each other and went to school together and worked together, that things would slowly evolve to be better. Yeah. And uh, the in in '63 when the march on Washington happened and I was part of it, there was that same kind of optimism that things would get better. And then a month or two later the bombings in the Birmingham church happened. Yeah. And the 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 same thing that you know when when Barack Obama became president there was this I mean a, a lot of talk especially on the right of a racially free country and all that and who could have imagined uh what was going on in Virginia <laughs> and all that to, uh, it's like it's worse, and what especially makes it worse is all the social media out there. Yep, yep. That that is so uncontrollable as to what's truth and what's lies, and what people are likely to believe, and and all of that. So uh, anyway, the optimism I thought that eventually things would get better, I don't feel unless there's an overwhelming victory. Well, these I had that be... same optimism but when 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 I was like twenties or something, and things started to. I so, said, "Well, now all we got to do is get rid of all these old people who have, have these <laughs> old, old ideas." Yeah. Uh-uh. I you know, I okay. had the same optimism when I marched across the San Francisco Bay Bridge in 1968, marched to, um, against the Vietnam War. Right. And I had that optimism, and now well, everybody's the... so. Well, I want to speak on these. We're having these storms that that just happened. That just oh boy, cleared yeah. through these states and just mm-hmm. the devastation is horrible. It, it just really horrible. It's our consciousness, and, and people doing. have lost everything. It, and it times like this is when we turn to each other and help each other mm-hmm. unconditionally. We don't ask what your rate, you know, what your religion is. We don't want to ask any of those questions. You're hungry. We'll yeah. feed you. We're supposed to. That's well. That's what we, I see happening. Right. It's. 
I just wish we could live in that state of mind, like after 9-11 and all these things. I do, too. We're, just, yeah. we're all here on the same plateau, but it's other people that try to segregate us and make us different, better than, uh, you know, these people are better than these people, these people are better than these people. And it's just getting, when does it come to a head? And I think this particular arc is, is that's what's happening. The the minority is turning into the majority. And that's where the, the, the hitch is. There's toothpaste has already left the tube, people. We're not going back. And they keep trying to, like, you know, women's rights, LGBT rights. All these rights are trying to push way back into the 50s or whatever. But that, it's, it's impossible. And the, but, but the pendulum swings. I believe it'll swing back toward rational right thinking. Now, I really do. Un- someday. Well, it sure doesn't look it like it, though. Looks like r- Right now, like- unfortunately, there are still the electoral college built into the system. Oh, but There's still yeah, the yeah, gross right. so, and, changes and, and, in and representation in the Congress. Uh, a senator yeah, from yeah. Montana has as much fewer constituents and a senator from California. Because they're allowed to get away with it. Well, it's two, the because there's two senators and, per but state. The, but the other big thing is the current Supreme Court is such an extraordinarily negative force. Yeah. Uh, and Trump uh, unless built. the court is increased in size or, or, or something different. Uh, and they have no consequence at all, uh, which they, is ridiculous. They uh, have no enforceable... Consequence. They, they have no ethics. Um, uh, it's out, and they, uh, many of them were appointed by Trump. presidents who were not uh, elected by a majority of the popular vote, mm-hmm. uh, and and also that they were. Uh, uh, the, there was a case of the one seat actually being stolen by Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, but the Supreme Court's a, a huge problem for quite a while. Even if if uh, we have a big Democratic victory, is, is Thomas the oldest one? Is he the next one to go? Uh, he I just Al, Alito isn't Alito the oldest? Oh, I don't know. I think Alito, he and then Thomas, uh, and yeah, uh, Th- Thomas preceded his appointment. But you know, we could have a whole show on the Supreme Court. We could have a whole show on um, on. Uh, the Electoral College. We could have a whole show on almost any Congress one of the on Congress and uh, representation. Right. All this stuff yeah. was put together by very smart people who had all these idealistic views <laughs> well, on how they, things well, would no, go. They have there manipulation were, is what they had in their, in their mind to manipulate people. There, there were not big, originally. I don't. Think. Well, not originally, but yeah. That's what it's turned into. Uh, originally, there were big, big compromises made between the North and the South. Right. Uh, uh, including such things as counting a black person as three-fourths of a human being. Yes. yes. Three-fourths. Uh, and and uh, that, anyway, many, and, and the, the, quote, founding fathers uh, were people who were white male property owners. And that excluded much of the people of the population. It excluded Indians. It excluded black people. It, uh, it excluded just all sorts of folk from having any, and, and women, any say in how decisions were made. Yeah. So to think they were idealistic types who didn't quite figure it out well is... Wasn't this land the land that they stole? Sure, of course. <laughs> so the they turn around and say, I'm better then because I've got this land? No, you don't. You took that land. It was not given to you. You d- you killed the people who lived on it. That's yeah. how that worked. And the wealth of Europe and the wealth of the United States and Canada to a lesser degree uh, was tied up with the whole uh, trade that went between Africa and, and the Caribbean and, and the United States and England. And it had to do with sugar. It had to do with cotton, and it had to do with human beings. Yep. And none of those uh, countries would have all as been as rich as they were if they hadn't exploited the the whole rest of the world so much. And wouldn't it be wonderful if all of this were taught to our children in schools instead of having— People in the Republican Party who want children not to learn this <laughs> very history. They don't even we're we're wasting our time teaching kids how to become trans. Oh, oh please! They, 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 they wouldn't even teach them about the Holocaust. And my family were 
part of the Holocaust, and it just makes me sick. And we just had a, an anniversary date of the yeah. uh, um, the Pink Triangle because anybody that was deemed homosexual or anything, even if they just walked with a switch or whatever they thought, I mean, they killed millions of them, and that's where our Pink Triangle comes from, the LGBT. And that still happens in Russia. Let that ha- yeah, yes, a lot, in of, a lot of countries. Yeah, it it, it it just baffles my mind that that how I was like at all okay in any regard, in, in just as a human. Uh, it is no, it isn't. And uh, <laughs> if we could, if we could just wave a magic wand over the people who have been deluded, it would be Trumpsters, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Did that all acknowledge like a, a person like let's say Sally. Um she's she's a mean person. Well that's just how Sa- Sally is. Billy. Or Billy. Or Billy, or, thank or, you. Not Billy. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like that's just how well, she you is. You only just of, met her and you gotta figure you know, it out that you quickly. You are pretty I know, good, right? <laughs> but if if that's how you let them treat you and that's how you let them oh, be, oh, then that's what, being what they're gonna that. exploit. Don't you think? <laughs> I think. I think you're right. Yeah, uh, I think shouldn't we treat each other as if as though as we would like to be treated? Though shouldn't we put the golden rule back into practice? Yes. One would hope. One would hope that would be nice. Yeah, and the next generation. It only happens when you need something. <sighs> when these these people need something from you, is when they're nice or whatever. It, that's oh, we're, we're down to about four minutes. I, yeah. four minutes. Oh, I I've, oh, I've been so now that uh, I'm nauseous. This is just ridiculous. I've been so wrapped up in this, I didn't do a station idea or anything. Anyway, uh, it's a little late now, but you're listening to uh, Curry Cafe on KCRW Radio 107 on your dial. And we're down to just a couple of minutes, so uh, sorry, any, anybody's got something they want to say to close this out. 100.7 on your FM dial right here in beautiful downtown Brookings yeah. where almost every day is a perfect day and we can always say yes it's, it's good to be alive and if you if you day. if you want to be on this show get a hold of us kciw.org or if you want to do anything else in a volunteer fashion for a radio station sorry we Same didn't have thing. a phone to, for the people yeah we there. normally have a text we'll, line here but for we'll some reason we'll we have don't it next have it. week you can always contribute money and let's help build a tower yeah oh thank you for saying that yeah we need that plug in the last minute mm-hmm. plug for the tower yeah yeah i haven't heard nothing about a tower oh oh but i'm, I'm from crescent city Oh, well, we need we need to get a new tower. Yeah, and it would no longer be low power; it'd be full power FM. And you could actually and, listen to us in Crescent oh, that City. Kind of tower. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, right now we kind of yeah. sneak into pr- Crescent City a little bit. I mm. I drive there. It depends on which car I ha- I'm driving. Some I get it, and some I lose it. Mm. And, yeah, it'd be nice if the signal was harder. But you can always hear us on YouTube, which is great. Oh, yeah. That's you, what I tell people to go. You can also get the podcast at www.kciw.org forward slash curry dash cafe. And if you want to do a program, well, I'm doing get, one. Yes. get in touch with us the same same place. After the first of the year, we're, we're going to put mine in, into works. Good. That's excellent. Oh, can't it's wait. Called, it's been called Share the Joy with Troy. Oh, good. Yeah. C-H-E-R. Hello. <laughs> just positivity from the LGBTQ community, just uplifting wonderful things that people are doing. Instead of all this negativity and hate. Excellent. We need through. that. That's we why. need that. Yeah. yeah. Get this election over with. Yeah. Oh, my minute. Okay, we're down to a minute. Well, thank we you always all. have a little trouble kind of filling this last minute. <laughs> no, well, we want to thank our, our listeners. and Yes, thank you for listening. And thank our other people. And thank you, everybody, for uh, yes. coming. Yes. Right. It's been a great conversation. Yeah, and it to has. our production yes. people as well. Please text Thanks, in Tom. your text in your questions at on the podcast. You you can write them in the comments at the pod in the podcast. Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh, right there we have yeah, we've been <laughs> saved by the bumper music. You know when you when you what have a show like this that's free form and you're down to just a few seconds left, everybody's looking at each other saying, What do we want to say? But that's it. Thanks for listening. Join us next week. Absolutely. Absolutely.